Okay. <clears throat> so you guys got better towards the end of that Kahoot yesterday. Um, definitely having to identify how many elements there are, like what are the elements, carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, potassium, whatever you see, and then how many of each of those are represented, okay? And so that's gonna be key um, for the rest of this stuff. Um, we know that the law of conservation of matter says that what you have on one side, after a chemical reaction takes place, you have to have that same amount on the other side. So whether we're talking counting up atoms or whether we're looking at grams, um, what you have on one side equals what's on the other. If it seems like something has disappeared or been destroyed, we know that that's not possible. What usually has happened is that some of it has turned into that gas form. Um, and so that's kind of what this is showing. If you have solid coal, goes through the chemical reaction and it gets burnt, then if you could contain or trap all the gas that was created, it would still have a mass of 100 grams. Um, it's just usually, obviously, gas like disperses and it's just kind of hard to see. So it seems like it disappeared when really it's still there. It's just not as obvious. Okay, <clears throat> here's some things that are gonna help you as we move forward. We cannot just change the subscript. In a chemical formula, the subscript is part of it. Right? It'd be a lot easier if we could, but then we're changing what we're dealing with, and that's a problem. We are not allowed to just randomly change something. It can change through a chemical reaction or through different bonding, but we just can't change the numbers to make it easier for us, unfortunately. Right? And so the script, subscript identifies the compound. It's kind of like your name, thank you. I can't just randomly change your name, right? I can't call you Sam. Nobody would know that I'm talking about Jane. Right, that'd be confusing. You can change his name to Sam. To legally get it changed, sure. right? But it, it, it gets confusing. So the formula identifies the compound, so we can't just change it. So I've given this example, H2O is water, but H2O2 is hydrogen peroxide. Definitely not the same thing. Just because you add one more oxygen doesn't mean you have like extra water. Nope. You've changed it. It is now hydrogen peroxide. What can be changed though is the coefficient, right? The coefficient is only changing the amount of that formula or that compound that you're dealing with. So the coefficient is what we're changing. Here's another example. I love food, so I use a lot of food examples. Sorry about that. Think about having one pepperoni pizza or 10 pepperoni pizzas. Say it's just my family, one pepperoni pizza. Say having a party, probably need 10 pepperoni pizzas. Maybe, I don't want to have that many friends. Maybe just a couple hungry ones. Anyway, one versus 10. Well, it doesn't matter how many pepperoni pizzas I get, I can have a million pepperoni pizzas. Doesn't matter. That is just the amount of the pepperoni pizza that I am getting. Still pepperoni pizza. So this one and this 10 are basically just the coefficient. It's just saying how many of those pizzas I have not changing the type, it's not affecting, like I'm not getting wings now and subs now, it's just pizza, right? The pepperoni pizza is staying the same. Just like the formula stays the same, meaning I have the same substance or that same compound. I can put a coefficient in front of any of that and it's still that same thing, okay? So if you think about the pepperoni pizza, I can have one or I can have 10, it's still the same thing, it's still pepperoni pizza, just how much of it do I actually have? So if you think of it like that, sometimes that helps. Okay, still pepperoni pizza. Okay, here is how we're gonna do this. We call this little thing over here a little T chart. I, it looks kind of like a T, right? You can use just the letter R for reactants and just the letter P for products. On the ones we're going to do, the reactants are always on the left um, side of the arrow, and then our products are always on the right. So that's how I set it up. 
because we're getting to our reactants first if you read left to right and then you get to your products. I tried to color code on this so that it makes it visually stand out also. Um, so if this is my equation that I'm looking at, if I'm trying to determine if this is balanced, because remember, whatever I have on this side has to total what I have on this side. So the first thing that we do is we have to identify all of the elements. Of this. Okay. So what do you see here? And you guys have these little, um, the beginnings of this on your paper. Notice how it also says, what do I, somebody read me what I have in bold there under that first T-chart in the corner, on that bottom right corner. Somebody read that out loud, please. Oh my gosh, you can all read. Somebody read it. Kenna, will you read it? Sure. Thank you. Oh. Go ahead, Brookston, thank you. Are you sure you can start with the <laughs> chart looks like mine before we move on to the next slide? Remember this chart is what helps you determine if your equation is balanced or not. If it's if not, you have to add to the coefficients to balance it. Good. So we're gonna be adding things to each slide. And so on yours, you need to make sure that you have the same things that I have before you move on to the next one, because it kind of builds, right? Okay, <clears throat> so tell me the elements that you see in this equation. What do you see, Gilbert? Tell me the elements. Do you see anything else? No, so those are the only two elements that I see. So we see C, A, and N. And so to determine how many we have um, of each type, we're going to look at the subscript, right? So first thing, I'm going to write them over here. CA equals 1. Give yourself a little bit of space after the 1, because if we need to make any changes, we're just going to cross out the 1 and then just keep adding in numbers as we go. All right, so leave some space there. So you might even want to write it like a little bit farther over if you need to. So we have one calcium. How many nitrogens on the reactant side do we have? Ready? Two. All right, so I'm going to have N2. Now I'm going to go to my um, product side. It's still CA and N, right? And so how many CAs do I have over there, Andy? Three. Okay, so CA is three. And how many Ns do I have, um, Connor Stockdale? Two. All right, so N2. Do I have anything that matches? CA1 and 3, N2 and 2. What matches? So the ends are good, right? The nitrogens look good. At least something's good, right? Are the calciums okay? No. All right, so in your T chart, make sure you write the elements and the total atoms for each element, and we do that on both the reactant and the product side. So right now, in your little T-chart on the bottom of your page, you should have what I have here. All right? All right. So for a balanced chemical equation, the number of CAs on the reactant has to equal the number of CAs on the product. We know that they do not. And the number of ends on the reactant must equal the ends on the product. Those do. So that's good. We're like 50% here. So when the total number of atoms of the elements are equal, it means that the law of conservation of matter is satisfied. So the ends are satisfied. Problem is, we see that um, the way that the equation is written, it is not satisfied because the calciums are off. Every element has to be equal totals for the whole equation itself to be considered balanced and for the law of conservation, conservation of matter to be satisfied. So that means this needs some help, okay? So we have to fix that, and the only way to do that is by adding coefficients until, sorry, that's cut off, I didn't say that. The total number of atoms on each side are balanced. So if everything was balanced, this would be good, and you wouldn't have to do a thing. 
but because the calciums are off, we have to fix it. So that means that N's are equal, two on each side, good and good, but the CA's are not. And so we can't just change the subscript and make this a three up here to make it right. So our only option is that we put a coefficient out front. And we're gonna put the coefficient on the side that is smaller. So which side is smaller? The reactant side for the calcium or the product side? What do you think, Egypt? Which side is lower for calcium? Is one or three smaller? Okay, what side is that? The, yep, very good. So she just told us that the reactant side for calcium is what is low. Well, here's my reactant side and here's calcium. So all we have to do is put a coefficient in front that when we multiply it by its subscript, which is one, we get our total over here that we're trying to reach. All right? I think I'm probably ahead of myself. So Egypt just told us that the reactant has only one. So that means we're going to put the coefficient in front of the CA on the reactant side. So whatever side is smaller, that's where you put the coefficient. We know that coefficient means multiplying. And so you have to ask yourself, what can I multiply by one? Because that's the subscript for calcium, right? It's basically a one. So what can I multiply by its subscript to get my total of three on the product side? So what do we, what do we put? Product mm -hmm. three, right? So three goes in front of the calcium on the reactant side. So notice, in my equation here, I'm going to put in a coefficient of 3. Don't just say you're going to do it and then forget to write it. A lot of times people will do that. So now I have 3 calciums plus N2. Okay. Now, the next thing is we need to update our chart. We need to have, so this three now becomes part of my chemical equation, all right? So that coefficient is definitely necessary. So now I have to update this based on my new chemical equation, right? And so um, that coefficient has to get distributed to my unwritten one, basically. So three times one gives me three. All right. And so what I'm going to do to actually update my chart is if you watch up here, I'm going to cross off that one and I'm going to write in my new total of three. So the chart is just a tool to help us make sure that this is balanced. This is the actual answer. This is what you're, I'm looking for. I need to see that this is updated with the correct coefficients, if you've had to add any, all right? This is just to help you determine if this is balanced or not, okay? And so sometimes people update the chart, but they don't ever change the equation. Well, that's not really balancing it. You did the work, but you have to make sure you include that coefficient. So this is the correct balance equation. So three, three, two, two, each side's totals equal each other, so everything is good, okay? And again, notice I didn't erase it. It's easier, I've learned, um, to just cross it out, and that way you can see like what you started with and then where you ended up and make sure like if there's any mistake, it's easier to find like, okay, you can backtrack and see um, maybe what went wrong, okay? So now calcium has three total atoms on each side. N, or nitrogen, has two total. <clears throat> nothing was changed with the nitrogen, so there's nothing we're crossing out. We're not adding any coefficients. It was able to just stay the same. So it doesn't need updated. It didn't need adjusted. And so here is our brand new 
um, balanced equation. Without that coefficient of three, it's not balanced. With it, it's balanced and it does satisfy the law of conservation of matter. That's it. That's what we're doing. Okay? <clears throat> that is our new balance equation. Okay, let's take a look at this one. So here's my equation that we're going to be looking at. Barium and oxygen reacting chemically to form this barium oxide. And so we are going to identify all the elements. So echo, give me the two elements that you see in this equation. What are they? Perfect, B, A, and O, okay? How many, um, oops, how many B, A's do we have, Kenna? One. Okay, on the reactant side we have one. What about oxygens, Connor, Tyler? Two. Good, that subscript of two tells me that I have two oxygens. Now we're gonna go to the product side. Um, Maddie. How many bariums over there? Okay. And how many oxygens, Garrett? One. All right. One and one, two and one. So in our T chart, make sure that you write the elements and the total atoms for each element. We do that for both sides. Okay. And so for a balanced equation, the number of BAs on the reactant side has to equal the number of variums on the product side. So BA1 and BA1. We're good. Let's look at the oxygens. <clears throat> Reactants total have to equal the products total. So we have two and one. That's a problem. Does not match. Okay, so when they don't match, the law of conservation of matter is not satisfied the way this equation is written. We can fix it though by putting in some coefficients. Everyone's with me? Good. All right. So, BAs are good. We don't need to do anything with that right now. But the O's are definitely not. Two and one don't match. So, obviously, it'd be nice if we could just put in a little two over here. Just that, add a subscript. Are we allowed to do that? Unfortunately not. Right? So, the only option we have is to put a coefficient in front of the side that is smaller. So, as I look at this, um, Naveo, which side for our oxygen is smaller, product or reactants? Okay, so the products are too low. So that means now we're going to have to put a coefficient on the product side in front of the oxygen. Can I just put a 2 in front of the O or do I have to put it in front of the whole thing? Can I shove a coefficient of 2 between the BA and the O? No, that would be nice also. Can't do it. We think of this as like parentheses, correct? So that means we have to put the coefficient in front of the entire formula. So sometimes people like to kind of cheat. They're like, oh, I'm just going to put my coefficient right here. No, we can't do that. <clears throat> so um, our O's definitely have less. And so we're going to be working by to try to bring up the product side. So that means we're going to have to put a coefficient in front of the O on the product side. And again, coefficient means multiply. So if you ask yourself, what can I multiply by my subscript of 1 to get a 2? Because we're trying to get to 2. Multiply by 2. Okay. So if we put a 2, and notice I have a yellow 2 there now, in front of that whole chemical formula. The whole thing. 
Okay, so now we're going to go to the next slide and we're going to update the chart. All right, so now this is the chemical equation I'm working with. So I need to make sure that my T chart matches this updated chemical equation. Okay. So again, we're thinking of the BAO, the barium oxide, as one thing. So that's why the two has to go in front of the whole thing. We can't split it up. And so again, if we kind of think of this as parentheses, it helps make that a little bit more visual. Um, you're more than welcome to write in the parentheses. If you're good without it, that's fine, but I think it helps certainly as we're just doing it during these first couple days. Um, so now we just have to distribute. That two has to go to each element, so the, to the barium and to the oxygen. So we need to update our chart. So with this new updated equation, right, um, we have to distribute that two to each element. So the barium subscript and the oxygens are both su subscripts of one. So that two coefficient has to be multiplied by the subscript of one to make two. So look at my updated chart. I'm gonna cross off my one, and now that becomes a two, right? My two distributes to my one, making that a two. My two is also gonna distribute to this oxygen and become a two. Okay, and so that two gets distributed to the oxygen as well, and it crosses off and becomes two. Okay. So, two distributes to each. Is everybody good, like with where we are there? Is that okay? All right, so now looking at the charts, my oxygens are good, they're two and two, but we've messed up our barriums. Don't panic, that's okay, that happens a lot. Like you fix one and it messes up another. You remember from the brain pop, um, they were saying, hey, it's kind of trial and error. Like you do one thing and it messes up another and then you just kind of keep going until everything is balanced. So as it is, it's not balanced. All right, so we have to keep going. Um, so this is just part of the process. So we're going to keep going along that same process until we can get everything balanced and equal. So it's my bariums that are off. So which side is, is low here, uh, Kendall? The reactants are the products for barium. <coughs> Good. So that means I know I'm going to have to do something over here, right? My barium side needs built up, so I'm going to have to use a coefficient over there. So we're going to have to put a coefficient in front of the barium on the reactant side. And so we have one on the reactants, two on the product. So we're trying to get to two. So what can I multiply by one to get a two? A couple whispers of two, right? All right. So put a two in front of the barium. And now this is the new chemical equation we're dealing with. Two bariums plus oxide reacts to form two barium oxides. So we're going to update our chart again, right? We have to continue with this new chemical equation with a coefficient of two out there. We have to distribute that two to the subscript of one. So two times one. We'll update this to a two. Yeah? You're confused? Okay. So So here's the reason why. The B A is by itself. It's not connected to the O. Here, the BA and the O are basically connected because they're bonded, okay? So if there's a plus sign between them, they're not connected. 
okay? So that's why the two only goes to the barium and it doesn't have to distribute to the oxygen. Um, this whole thing, you don't, that's a good question. You don't put the whole reactants in a, like a parentheses. You only do the chemical formula. I've never had that question before. I see exactly what you're saying though. That's a really good question. Um, yeah, so this is by itself. It is not part of a chemical formula where it's bonded with another element. So that's why the two just stays with the barium. Really good question. Okay. So um, putting that coefficient in front of just the barium on the reactant side and then in front of the barium oxide on the product side makes this all balanced, right? Because you have two and two, two and two. So it's good. This is the new balanced chemical equation. So even if you have a beautiful chart, if you actually don't write in the two and the two here, you're still dealing with this same old unbalanced equation. So those coefficients have to be filled in there. Okay, and so the way this is now, with those two extra twos in there, it is balanced and um, satisfying the law of conservation of matter. Okay. Don't panic. This is going to be a lot of what we're going to do together. Off to the side, you can see that there is a gap. Actually, let me cut these out. I'm going to get mine pulled up. Um, that's where you're going to make your little T charts. So don't make them huge because you're going to need to make one for every problem that we do. Anybody need one? Good. Okay, I do not want you working ahead. Stay with me. Um, we're going to kind of jump around a little bit. So we're going to be looking at number one only here. There we go. All right, so over here, off to the side, make a little T, put an R for reactants, put a P for products. Anything to the right here, we're calling these are reactants. Anything to, did I say to the right? Yeah. yeah. That's not correct. Anything to the left side of our arrow is the reactant side. Anything to the right, I think that's all of These Anything to the right is going to be our products. So sometimes I've seen people where they put like the R up here and the P over here just so like they know in their mind like that's where these values are coming from. If you want to do that, that is perfectly fine. Okay? So we're going to be looking at just this, um, at number one right now. 
to kind of focus in on that. The other thing that I've seen people do is underline the area where coefficients could actually go. Because in this equation, there's only three places you could put a coefficient. Right here, here, or here. You can't fit one in here. You don't put one in behind. Like, those are really the only three options. So you're welcome to do that because sometimes that helps people kind of key in like that's where it needs to go or that's a possibility. Um, if that bothers you or that does not help you, then please don't do that. But I just like to show that. So what are the two elements that we're dealing with here, Billy? Good. So I'm going to put, and notice I'm giving myself plenty of room, H and O, giving myself plenty of space. Don't work right up to the line because you're going to have to maybe cross things out. All right, so on the reactant side, Dane, how many hydrogens and oxygens do I have? Two. Two for both, right? Yeah. We see that with our subscripts. On my product side, works in, what do I have? Uh, two hydrogens and one oxygen. Very good. Okay, so now I'm gonna switch my color. Um, What's good and what's not good, Andy? On the reactant side, they're balanced. On the product side, they're not. Okay. We're looking, though, at element to element. So on this side, is this balanced? Are these balanced? No. So I get what you're saying. These two are balanced on the reactants, but we have to look from side to side. Okay. So the hydrogens are good. Oxygens are off. So um, let's see. See, Layla, which oxygen is smaller, the product or the reactant? Okay, so that tells me I'm going to have to build up my product side. So, Ethan, what can I multiply by one to get a two? Okay, so that tells me I need to put a coefficient of two here. So, you need to write that in on your equation. Now I need to update my chart, all right? So I have to distribute this, right? So two times two changes my hydrogens to what? Good, four. And then two times my one changes my oxygens to what? Okay, so tell me what looks good here now. Brookston? Your oxygens are good, but your hydrogens they are unbalanced. Okay, so I need to look at my hydrogens. Um, let's see. Uh, Billy, which side is smaller for my hydrogens? Good. So I find my reactants. I find my hydrogen. This is the only place that I can put a coefficient for these hydrogens. So what can I multiply by 2 to equal 4? What do you think, Brady? All right, let's try a two. So if I put in a two, two, and then I have to distribute this, changes this to a four as well. Howard, how do things look now? Good. Four matches four, two matches two. So my new balanced chemical equation is correct with this two coefficient and this two coefficient. There's no one exact way I can tell you to do these. Again, it's that trial and error kind of situation. So just kind of write the elements, write how many you have of each, and you have to kind of go from there. Because sometimes it'll be this side that's low, sometimes it's this side that's low. Sometimes you make one change and it's fine. Sometimes you have to make two or three changes to get things balanced. You just have to keep going with the process until you get totals equal. Okay? We're going to stop there. You guys have done good work. Two minutes early. Keep this paper. Do not do it. It is not homework. Front and back. Have every segment question done. Don't do that.